What's up guys, my name is Ivan Valdovinos and I create videos on graduate school life and advice. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. In today's video, we are gonna dive into eight sections of the Harvard Graduate School of Education application in order to help you prepare a competitive application package. Let's get right into the video. The first thing they wanna know from you is your basic biographical information. This includes your legal name, your background, your ethnicity, your gender, your contact information such as your email, your mailing address. It also asks about your citizenship in addition to just basic things that they want to know about you in case they want to contact you for like let's say an interview. Harvard also wants to know about your basic background, your the level of education of your parents and as well as if you received a Pell Grant, if you are low income, if you're first generation, things like that. For me for example, I indicated that I was first generation, that I received a Pell Grant during my undergraduate which told them that I am considered a low-income student and then I also put in there that my parents did not go past a high school diploma they didn't even get the high school diploma so I indicated that that way I can kind of show them a little bit about my background and how getting a PhD or a master's is a reach for my generation in terms of my family generation the next section in the application is titled the academic history piece this section wants you to indicate the fellowships you have applied or received it also wants you to indicate the fellowships, awards, and honors you have received throughout your undergraduate career. And it also asks you which other schools you're applying to and considering for a graduate education. So for my honors and fellowships, I put in there that I was part of this program called the Institute for the Recruitment of Teachers, which is the program that really helped me prepare PhD applications as well as master's applications. And they were able to give me some guidance throughout my journey. I also indicated that I, I had one of fellowship as an undergraduate for the American Education Research Association, which is the biggest education conference association you can be a part of if you're in the field of education. And so I indicated that on my application. I also put that I was in the top 10% of writers at my institution for undergrad. And this was one of the ways that I showed my strength in writing. And the reason why is because my institution, Washington State University, they have juniors, right, turn in a, a junior writing portfolio and so I was able to achieve distinction with that portfolio which meant that I was in the top 10% of writing for the juniors in my class. I also mentioned that I was part of the International Honor Society in Education called Kappa Delta Pi and the reason why I put this in there is because I, I did apply to an education master's program and so I knew that faculty were gonna know Kappa Delta Pi as being a prestigious institution to be a part of because it's relevant to education and so I mentioned that in there I also want to mention that they only allow you five spots for that so you have to kind of think about your awards your honors and place them strategically for me I wanted to make sure that they understood that I was a strong writer and that I was passionate about education so I was pursuing educational fellowships and honors and awards when I was an undergraduate student in terms of putting which schools I was thinking of applying in one of the in one of the books that I read about graduate school applications, I read that it is important for students to apply to 9 through 12 programs because the, statistically, this gives you a higher chance of getting into at least one. And so I took that advice. So I applied to, I think it was 9 or 10. Um, I can't really remember. I'll pop them up here once I um, do my research again. But it was a lot of work. And so in terms of putting which schools I was applying to, this is kind of hard for me to just, I, don't, I didn't know what to put here when I um, and what to tell Harvard. And so I chose to put that I was going to apply to the University of Texas, the University of Arizona, University of Washington, and Stanford University. They, they only allow you to put up to four institutions. And so I wanted to show them that I was applying everywhere and not just like Ivy League schools. And so this to me was telling them that I wasn't just putting my eggs in one basket and thought that I was going to make it into an Ivy League school, that I was applying everywhere. And I was really looking for that research partnership with the faculty member that really fit my needs and so um, I think that's a good strategy to take is apply everywhere across the country private and public institutions and not just Ivy League schools what I chose to do is I chose to apply to three safety schools three reach schools and three middle ground schools which allowed me to be competitive in, in different spaces and, and my goal was to just get to graduate school and so I thought that was the best strategy for me to get into at least one school and start my graduate journey Harvard also wants to know about your research 
experience. So in the academic history section, they want you to indicate how much research experience you have. So for me, I was fortunate enough to go um, get accepted to a summer research program at the University of Arizona, which I indicated on this application. I put on there that I was at the University of Arizona for three months for the whole summer. I conducted research under a faculty member and I also indicated what skills I had gained. I was able to transcribe um, interviews. I interviewed students. I did a qualitative study and I presented that work at their conference once the program was over. And so I put all these different details in that section of the application. At, at my undergraduate institution, I was also part of the Ronald E. McNair Achievement Program, which is a program that helps underrepresented students get into graduate programs, specifically PhDs. And through this program, I was able to also conduct research under a faculty member and I indicated this in my application as well as the skill sets that I gained. And at the in this um, research project, I was doing a, a mixed methods project and so I indicated that on my application. So I was telling Harvard that I knew how to do qualitative studies as well as quantitative studies and mixed method studies as well. And so I thought that that would help me gain acceptance because I was diverse in my research skills. So if you're still early on in your undergraduate career, I suggest that you seek out those research opportunities, whether it's at your institution or if you apply for a summer research opportunity program, those are great as well because it's going to give you that insight on what the research experience is like and how you can tackle research and change the world with your research. And so I suggest that you start on that early. I kind of started late. I started my junior year, which I thought it was I thought was late. So if you're early on, if you're a freshman or a sophomore in college, definitely start seeking out those opportunities now versus waiting till your senior year or your junior year because you will most likely be applying during the summer of your junior year. And so this will give you some years to build that research skills and not just and not put nothing on this section of the application. And this brings up another point. For me, I think it's important for every student to that's applying to graduate school to um, fill out as much as possible on the application. Try to leave nothing blank because you don't want them to fill the gaps. You don't want them to assume things about your application. Whatever you put on this application is what they're going to take from your application and yourself and your background and your journey. So you want to make sure that you are inputting as much detail about yourself and your experience. Finally, the last thing they're going to ask you in this section um, titled the academic history section is about your educational background. So it's going to ask you about your undergraduate institution. For me, I attended Washington State University and so I indicated that on my application. They also want to know your GPA. So my grade point average was a 3.49 and so I put that on my application and I also indicated that I was doing a dual degree and so I, I put in there that I was pursuing a bachelor's of arts in English with an option in education and that I was receiving a, a teaching certification through that um, program. I also indicated that I was pursuing a bachelor's of arts in foreign languages and, and culture, in particular Spanish because I wanted to teach Spanish eventually in high school or middle school. And so I put that uh, all that information in this section as well. That way Harvard knew that I was pushing myself academically and not just pursuing one degree but two and also a certification for teaching. And so this was, I was able to tell Harvard that I wasn't taking any time off, that I was taking this, my undergraduate career seriously and that I wanted to achieve as much as possible and learn, a learn as much as possible in the education space by doing by pursuing two degrees versus just one. Harvard also wants to know which faculty you might want to work with whether as an advisor or in research and so they're gonna ask you to input at least three faculty who you have the best fit with the research and their background and so one of the pieces of advice that I want to give is that you do your research early that you uh, go on their website, explore the faculty bios, their work, read some of their work, but also reach out to them. When I reached out to them, I received a generic response. And so that still didn't discourage me from reaching out. I think even if they see your email, they know that you are interested in their work. And so if they see your application coming through um, and they're part of the committee, they're able to recognize who you are, your name, and that you reached out. So reach out to them, even if they don't respond or they don't have that dialogue with you. For me, I chose three um, faculty members members who fit my needs. So I was looking for someone that was well versed in family engagement, Latino males, Latinx studies. And so when I dug into these biographies of um, these faculty members, I found someone that was an expert in family engagement. And so I selected her as my top choice and I ended up having her as my advisor while at Harvard. And so that was a great experience to be able to showcase that on the application and then having her as an advisor in my journey. I also think that my application
application was unique in my research niche. So I was really looking at learning more about how to include Latino fathers in their children's educations. And my undergraduate study, one of them was on that topic particularly. And so I knew that I can use that to my advantage because there was not that much research on Latino fathers um, being involved in the ch children's education. And so I knew that if I mentioned that I wanted to work with Professor Matt, who was the expert on family engagement, her work doesn't really include fathers. It's more general in terms of just family engagement as a general sense. And so I think that when Dr. Mapp read my application, she found that um, interesting. And then so I thought that maybe she was going to be interested in working with me and expand that work so she can gain some insight as well to use for her own personal use and her own personal work. And so I think that it's important for you to be as unique as possible, whether it's through your research, through your mission, through your um, personal statement, your application. And that way, these faculty members who are reading your application would want to work with you and learn from you and know that they're going to gain someone in the community that is going to be able to teach others something new. And so definitely try to do some introspection and find out what that unique part of your story is and bring that to life in your application materials. Harvard also wants to know your employment history. I applied for their master's of education right, af right out of undergrad. And so I felt disadvantaged in this sense. But what I did was I included everything. Even though I did not have full-time experience, I did do some work-study jobs. I did um, some internships. I was part of um, a lot of leadership positions in my club. And so I mentioned all that stuff in my employment section. Even though it wasn't full-time 40 hours a week employment, I still included that in there because I wanted to show them that I did do things that, that gave me some employable skills and not just left that blank. So if you're applying straight out of undergrad, I suggest that you input here your internships, your work-study jobs, your on-campus jobs, anything that relates to employment because it's better to have something on your application than nothing at all. So I suggest that you put these things on there and showcase that you were not just a bookworm, that you were also part of other leadership positions and employment organizations, things like that. One of the weakest parts of my application was definitely the test scores, the standardized testing. So for graduate education, you most likely will be taking the GRE. And so what I did is I knew that I wasn't strong in standardized testing. And so I studied as hard as I could, but I didn't put too much stress on myself, to be honest. I kind of just studied like I did some practice tests. I think I did like three practice tests. And then I went to go take the test. And I took the test the summer before I was applying. I did do a prep course through the University of Arizona where I was doing my summer research. They required me to do a prep course. And so I did do a little prep course for two weeks, um, which was valuable. They didn't really teach me that much about the content of the application of the um, test, but they did teach me strategies on how to tackle the, the test. And so I find that interesting that it, these tests are more about test taking strategies than the content that they ask you about my scores. So for the verbal piece, I scored a 144, which was a, the 22nd percentile. That's really low. For the quantitative piece, I scored a 143 or the 13th percentile. And for the analytical writing, I scored a four, which meant it was the 57th percentile. So as you can tell, my scores were really weak and I was still able to get into Harvard. So the reason why I think I was still able to get in was because I made sure that I showcased that I was intelligent in different aspects of the application. So one of the ways that I did that was by um, showing that I was a strong writer. So um, I didn't get a bad score on the writing piece here, but it wasn't the best. I know other people that uh, other colleagues that I had at Harvard had higher scores than I did in the analytical writing. And so the other way that I showed that I was a strong writer was through my letters of rec recommendation. So I asked my letter writers to talk about my strong writing skills and the thesis that I wrote and how I was able to develop my critical thinking skills and that piece of paper, that thesis, and that it was a publishable piece of writing. And so I was able to write at graduate school level. And so also, like I mentioned earlier, my undergraduate institution, they have this junior writing portfolio, which I scored really high on. And I passed that with distinction, which meant that I was in the top 10% of my class for juniors. And so that also showcased that I was a strong writer. And then also just writing my personal statement, I made sure that there was no mistakes, that it flowed well, that it had a vision and a mission. And um, 
I was I used that piece to showcase that I was also strong in writing which I know in graduate school you need to be strong in writing and reading and and critically thinking and so I wanted to showcase all those three skill sets throughout my application and not just um, have my GRE determine those aspects of myself all right so that wraps up my second video on my on the stats that got me into Harvard if you like this video please give it a like subscribe and let me know what other videos you want me to include in this channel I really want to help you get into your dream graduate school and so definitely comment down below let me know and I will make more videos for you Thank you.